Federal Bureau of Investigation. If this is an emergency, please hang up and dial 911. If you know your party's extension, you may dial it at any time. Please listen carefully for other options. To report a bank robbery, press 1. To report a possible internet-related crime, please visit www.ic3.gov. To report other federal crimes or suspicious activities, press 2. If you're a member of the media, press 3. If you're an FBI employee or other law enforcement, press 5. For questions concerning fingerprinting or background checks, please call 304-625-2000. For information on employment with the FBI, please visit www.fbijo.com. You have reached the FBI's public access line. This call may be monitored or recorded for quality assurance, investigative, or other purposes. For English, press 1. Please choose from the following options. If you wish to report online crime, email host or scam, press 1. If you wish to report suspicious activity that may be related to terrorism, press 2. If you wish to report network intrusion matter or provide a tip on an FBI fugitive, press 3. If you wish to report public corruption, a civil rights violation, or white collar crime, press 4. If you wish to report some other federal violation, calling a... Um, hi, my name is Sarah Blevins. Um, I'm hoping this avenue goes somewhere, um, but I seriously need help. Uh, back in September of, uh, 26th of this last year, uh, I'm in Guilford County. Um, our children were unlawfully seized. Uh, no petition, no warrant. Um, they have not been granting us due process this entire time. No assessments have ever been done on our family to even determine protective services. Um, I've never been a criminal before. They've thrown me into jail twice, once for talking too long, and the second time was for posting on social media. Um, I've been filing complaints against them, um, which isn't really doing anything. I just don't know what Are to do at this point. Jail? Are you taken to jail right? Yes, sir. Tw twice. The first time was for talking too long in court. Um, uh, the, my lawyer stepped down, and then she continued to serve, and I, I, I made a statement, and then Judge Betty Brown said, you talked too long, put your hands behind your back. Um, two bailiffs literally threw me into a holding cell in the back and put me in jail for three days. Um, I have fibromyalgia, and I'm still, I actually got out of the hospital, and they diagnosed me with assault. Um, and the second time was uh, they're trying to gag order me from posting on social media, but that's not actually what the reason is because DSS said that it's emotionally damaging my children for me to post on social media. And the judge said that it should be a confidentiality issue, but then uh, a lawyer actually emailed a friend of mine and said that it was because somebody, uh, one of the parents complained that they think that um, something was said outside of the courtroom or something. It, it's just a huge mess. I have, like, paperwork and proof for all these things what I'm talking the, about. What is the court? Uh, pardon? What is the court? Uh, District Court 18. Okay, well, what is it that's being heard in that? Um, family court cases. Okay. It's an open court setting. Okay, what is the court proceeding concerning? Um, the unlawful seizure of my children. No, they forced me into court. They didn't even actually follow the summons laws. My lawyer gave me my court summons before she was even my lawyer. Okay, so the state is presenting a case on that? Um, I believe it's on behalf of the county, Guilford County. The county, so the county is asserting that your children were seized unlawfully? No, I'm telling, I'm saying that they were seized unlawfully. Yeah, um, the case is concerning uh, allegations based on caseworkers' perjury. So what are the allegations? 
Um, some of the allegations are like my, my husband has uh, borderlines and bipolar. One of the allegations, the caseworker alleged that um, he pulled a knife on me and, in front of the children, which has never happened. Um, she came up with the, the allegation that I lived in my car with my kids, which I've never done. Um, part of the allegations are that we exhibit weird and strange behaviors. Pardon? No charges. No charges. They didn't even actually have proof for the adjudication. So they this, so this proceeding regarding continued care of your children? Um, so. No, they're, they're, they're trying to force me to sign a case plan, which actually becomes a contract if enforceable by law. Um, the judge threatened to terminate my rights based on that, which you can't terminate rights based on that. There's a state statute how you terminate rights. Um, the guardian ad litem threatened to tell the judge that he thinks that I, they should terminate my rights if I don't sign the case plan. And the case plan's built on perjury. That's what the, the caseworker had actually told me, that the, case, the pl plan's not built on the assessments of North Carolina Department of Social Services. It's actually based on the allegations, which is full of perjury. I've been asking these people to follow due process to um, safeguard our, our constitutional rights and, and all they do is retaliate against me. I mean, they took away my, my visitations when I simply asked for dignity and compassion. My son's special needs and it just is, I mean, this is just, I don't have anybody to ask them to do their jobs, to follow law. And I went to I went to North Carolina Department of Social Services internal audit, and there's a woman named Valerie Johnson investigating my case, and she had uh, she had the guts to say that children don't apply to the search and seizure laws. There, there's no rights, there's no safeguard against just people coming and seizing my kids, and that's what they did under police threat that I would go to jail if I didn't let the strange woman take my children. And why did they take your children for those allegations you mentioned earlier? Because they made because of this caseworker uh, perjured allegations. She had the initial report of us um, homeschooling, and because uh, we were in a family shelter at the moment, and um, I kept trying to tell them and show them the proof that we were homeschooling and compliant with the state, but she didn't want to see that. And she, she detained us illegally with the city police and then the county police for several hours while she built these allegations. So they didn't even go through the assessments that you're supposed to go through. And I had to learn all this. I've never been involved with CPS before. It finally, it finally caught up with me that something wasn't right and they're not going according to state policies and, policies and procedures. Otherwise, they would have gone through the intake assessment. The director of the social services would have had to do certain things according to state statutes. Um, they would have had to do safety and risk assessments. Uh, for us to determine whether or not they we, that we were eligible for their services. I mean, they didn't do any of that stuff, and they still refuse. I just have I just had a meeting on the twenty third of February with DSS, asking them again, requesting that they please go through due process, their own due process of policies and procedures, and and assess us, and they they refuse. I have, I have perjury in my court papers. I mean, they put that I consented to certain things, and I didn't consent to certain things. I don't even consent to this whole process. And it's just been retaliation against my family just for me asking them to do the right thing and follow laws. That's all I want. If they would just follow laws, policies, and procedures, we wouldn't even be in this mess. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, I've been talking with other families in Guilford County looking for support, and this has been happening to them too. One woman had her son ripped away from her because her husband had spoken something unsavory, which was wrong, to a caseworker, and had eight police officers surround her and rip her, her son off of her. And she did everything that DSS asked her to do, which was seven things, and they still terminated her rights. So, I mean, my case in Guilford County is not an, an isolated incidence with the unlawfulness in this county concerning family court cases.
but I, but I need help. I, I need help. My kids are in a bad state right now. My daughter is having night terrors, and she was just taken to the hospital yesterday morning because she was not responsive. My son is autistic, and they're shuffling him around like crazy. He was in a, a runaway shelter for teenagers, 11 years old with autism, when they, and they separated my kids. This is, not, this is just tearing our family apart. Okay. As far as like the discrimination, the loss of constitutional rights, the retaliation, the unlawfulness. I mean, who? I mean, what what do you guys do? I mean, who who holds who who's able to hold? them accountable to doing their jobs correctly, to serving society correctly. As far as the court proceeding and such, I don't know you would need to speak with an attorney. That's counsel. Well, the first public defender I had was crooked. She wrote that I consented to things that I didn't. I told her out in the, the hallway that these proceedings were corrupt, and she said, just go with it. And then I ended up pulling a, an adoption services thank you card out of her window, which is conflict of interest, out of her office window. And my second, this public defender now that they forced upon me because I wanted to go pro se, he joked about on Facebook that he should write take your kids on his knuckles, and a DA in this county was joking with him on that Facebook page. I, I have nobody when I walk into that courtroom to help me I've been making my complaints with the State Bar Association, but what what do my complaints do? They're they're not they're not helping my kids. They're not helping my family. They're not asking the people in this county to follow constitutional to protect constitutional laws. The very things that they swore to uphold when they took their positions. I mean, and if the FBI can't help, who who can? Does this mean that? Does this mean nobody can help? What, I mean, what are our constitutional rights for then? Why do we even have them? Yeah, and unfortunately, I don't have any other direction for you. Well, what do you guys do? You mean just overall, man? I mean, for what are you, what, what is your job description? What are you supposed to be doing to help? We address federal violations that fall within our jurisdiction. So, so constitutional rights are not within your jurisdiction? Not always. And are you supposed to be enforcing federal violations then? Enforcing the laws that correspond to those. So, who, who asks, who enforces the laws that are being broken? I mean, I can, I can, I've got a huge binder full of laws with tabs all over the place of things that have been violated for North Carolina state statutes. I could literally provide you with all the paperwork of, of perjury and and just awful awful things that I just didn't dream could happen in America. And if it's perjury, then you need to present that before the district attorney's office. How do I do that? I don't know the exact process for any particular office or just to speak with the office itself for direction on what they need to receive. So what what do you do then? With regards to what you've described, ma'am, nothing. There isn't anything we would be able to address here. What about the federal laws that I've sent in complaints about? Like, do you enforce those? What about what exactly, ma'am? Um, like, the federal, federal uh, act 
cats and things like that that have sent in complaints about? Do you enforce those? What exactly are you referring to? Like, um... They have t <clears throat> they have taken away 100% of my parental rights, and I don't even have my rights terminated. And I went to my son's school to have access to his educational records. I wasn't even on the emergency list contact. Okay. And they turned me away because they called DSS, and DSS lied to them. And so I've, I sent in a f complaint, a FERPA complaint, um, and that actually gives them 45 days to comply or they violate. They could lose up to $64 million to the school board. And if they violate it, what happened? Do you guys enforce that? Yeah, in terms of that, might be a state violation. Yeah, it might be. I mean, I'm just wondering what you guys do if... if <laughs> For a more exhaustive list of what it is we do now, I encourage you to visit our website. Okay. So I don't get any help as an American citizen. I have to try to appeal to the President of the United States. That's that's great. All right, thank you for your time. Have a good day, man.